Max, I want you to get back into what you were covering there. An economic yeah. expert, uh, Max yeah. Kaiser. But, but, but hold on. But yeah. before you get back into it, I want to be sure and kind of shift gears in the next segment for listeners to know that I want to talk about the on-the-ground effects of this, what, what it's going to start looking like on Main Street. It's already bleak out there as this deteriorates and what you politically see in your crystal ball in the future coming out of this, not just in the U.S., but globally, you're in Europe. Go ahead. Well, yeah, getting, uh, getting back to what we were saying before the break and what this is going to mean, you know, uh, to the day-to-day -day reality. During the Bush years, the way that the U.S. was supporting the dollar was they would just, um, you know, invade countries, uh, certainly under uh, when uh, Saddam Hussein started trading his oil in euros. That was one of the, um, the reasons that, you know, shortly thereafter you saw shock and off and uh, Bush invading Iraq. In, in Iran, uh, they also were talking about trading their oil in euros. And, of course, the belligerents toward Iran uh, heated up. And it was interesting that the comments were made in the speech uh, this week by, uh, by Obama. He mentioned that the, the 1953 coup uh, in Iran was in part facilitated by America's CIA, which is something that another one of your guests, John Perkins, the economic hitman, has been talking about in details in his book. Uh, so it's interesting that these things are coming to light, uh, and it's not on the Alex Jones show, but it's coming from a, a major addresses from the President of the United States. So uh, the things that you've been talking about that have really been in the shadows uh, are now starting to come to light. Now, going forward, since so much is becoming is coming to light because of the work of uh, people like yourself, these banks are going to have to rely more on and more on financial engineering and um, financial fraud, financial skullduggery, and accounting fraud. Uh, just to get back to the, the article I was quoting a moment ago about Citigroup, uh, Citigroup, uh, they reported a 300, uh, they, they got $346 billion of capital from the government. Uh, they went on, which accounted for 25% of their quarterly net income, uh, thanks to a rule change in, the, in their accounting, and then another $2.7 billion before taxes came from an accounting rule that lets the company record income when the value of its own debt fails. Uh, so the company is, is trading with itself. and uh, They're buying their profit. own debt and calling it a profit, like yeah. Treasury and Federal Reserve selling each other debt. This is the snake-eating-its-tail situation. So they're in flames calling it record profit in delusion with idiots buying the stock in the stock market just as delusional. It's like the, an arsonist getting paid in charcoal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you know, funny. So these guys are trading with themselves. They, so they're ramping up the accounting fraud because... The era of the Bush era, you know, Bush was very simple. You know, he's a very simple program. To defend the dollar, we're going to go invade a country and kill a lot of people. But that era is over. Now we're, going to, we're entering an era of more of this accounting fraud and financial engineering. So what that, that means to the people on the street, people in, in their day-to-day -day lives, is that you're going to see more volatility. You're going to see the prices of things on, on various markets around the world Up and down. are going to become more volatile. So the boing, stock boing, market, boing, boing. I'm sorry? Pogo sticking. Yeah, more of this pogo stick action. So the mark, stock market, bond market, um, precious metal markets, commodity markets, you're going to see a lot more uh, what you would call beta, a lot more volatility, a lot more action, a lot more um, ups and downs, and the, more of a roller coaster ride, which, of course, is is great if you're on the inside, like a Goldman Sachs banker, you know, or someone who's on the inside of Wall Street who knows how to, has experience, and they can profit from this volatility. But for most people, it's scary, and they're on this roller coaster of, of volatility with prices of the markets are going up and down in hugely exaggerated ways. And that's going to so kill Main Street, to... is it not? That's going to kill Main Street further. Well, yeah, it'll, it'll keep people... It will force people in the lowest possible return investments because they are perceived as safe. But, of course, those investments are, are merely the feeder funds for the big profitable trades that are done on Wall Street. So, yeah, so they're going to buy government be, bonds. Quarantined, if you will. Their investments are going to be in these 
uh, in, you know, making one half of one percent. Meanwhile, inflation will be raging, but they'll be so frightened to put their any capital to work in something that might benefit it from inflation, like precious metals or commodities, because the volatility will be so outrageous. So they're going to be they're going to be cowering in the corner with their half a percent or one percent CD. And meanwhile, the professionals on Wall Street are going to be racking up 20, 30, 40 percent annual gains by gaming the system and taking advantage of this incredible Because volatility. that's where the money is, is when things are going up and down, because they're engineering it. They know how to place the bets because the dice are totally loaded. Long segment coming up with Max Kaiser and your calls. Max, tell us more about what you see in the future politically when we get back. We're good old Max Kaiser. MaxKaiser.com is our guest. We're going back to him in just a moment. I have some big breaking news. And it's not just that H.R. 1207 to audit the private criminal Federal Reserve. That is the shadow government. That is the problem. I mean, if they get uh, 22 more sponsors, they can pass it. I mean, this is a done deal if we just believe and get behind it. And so there's some breaking news. The Federal Reserve is striking back. We'll break this news. It just came out in the last few minutes. I want to get Kurt Nemo or Steve Watson or both to do a Friday report on this because this is the good news is we blew up the Death Star. We're very close to it. The bad news is the Empire striking back. So we'll get Max Kaiser's take on this breaking news in one moment. I do want to uh, tell you about some of our sponsors that have made today's show possible. One of them is and Prison Planet. Dot com. Okay, here is the breaking news, and we'll get Max Kaiser's take on this. This just came out in the last uh, 30 minutes. Uh, earlier today, it came out. There's a 190 co-sponsors to audit the private Fed. People go, abolish it first. Ron Paul's a traitor. Ron Paul has a bill to abolish the private Federal Reserve. But he figured out a few years ago the best way to do it is to demand an audit, which everybody wants to know. The public, Congress always asks Bernanke, where's the money? He laughs at him and says, I'm above the law. Greenspan goes on, Lair News Hour and says it. It's in the Obama deception, you know, saying they're above the law. So this is something that has a chance to pass. See, see, if we can get the door open off the castle, we can go in and throw the, throw the bums out. But we got to blow the door off the hinges first. That's what this is. Okay, so this is reality. We're moving forward. We're having a shot at this at winning. But what does the Federal Reserve do? Well, I want to tell you, the Fed has sent out tens of thousands of bureaucrats. They are paying school teachers and professors from every major university I know of. Right here in Texas, I see it in the news. They pay the universities grants and pay thousands of dollars a year to bring the professors in to pay them to go out and teach the Federal Reserve's good, the bailout's good, the banker takeover is good, because they're engaged in a coup through NORTHCOM, but not just of the U.S. of the world. They admit it's a new bank of the world run by them. We pay carbon taxes, too. So, Fed intends to hire lobbyists and campaign to buttress its image. Not only do they have these armies of lobbyists they're paying on the grassroots, they now are saying in Bloomberg, oh, they're going to lobby to fix their image in Congress. Bull. You read deeper, it's to lobby against being audited in H.R. 1207. They've never been audited. They have a fake audit where they audit the chairs and pencils, but not where the money goes. And Obama promised every dime of the bailout and every dime of the stimulus would be accounted for. Now it's a state secret. So the people that ran Bush run Obama. Max Kaiser, uh, Federal Reserve intends to hire a veteran lobbyist and seeks to counter skepticism in Congress about the central bank's growing power over the U.S. financial system. Now, they tried the mind trick of saying, we're above the law, Mount Olympus in the clouds, you mere mortals are down there. Now Congress is, is, is becoming contemptuous of the godlike criminal bankers. Now their facade of infallibility and, 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 and Zeusness is uh, evaporating, uh, and they're now dispatching hordes of minions everywhere. I think we got a chance to uh, literally arrest these bastards. Max Kaiser, what say ye?